This one has overdrive. It does. Three speed motor. Let's see. Everybody's going to be happy to see you. They can hear you and see you right now. Yep, you're right smack in the center. Well, I see it's one o'clock. Time to call David. Yeah. So this one has overdrive. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Three speed motor. Let's see you. Everybody's going to be happy to see you. They can hear you and see you right now. Yep, you're right smack in the center. Well, I see it's one o'clock. Time to. I've done that more times than I'd like to admit. Yeah, but I've never uh, gotten burned by saying something I wished I hadn't said. Yeah, right. Let's see if we can get a hold of David, and I bet you he'll answer properly because he seems to have really improved in that regard. <laughs> One ringy day. Two ringy day. Hello, your evidence. Hello, your effluence. Uh, what's the news at your end? Uh, we've cracked it, Field. What's this wee stuff? I do all the work. I was up till midnight writing last night. Well, yeah, and you're getting very close, or we're collectively getting very close, because uh, I realize now that uh, Jason McLean, when he was in the office of the Prime Minister of Canada from 2000 to 2002, he was tasked and authorized to develop uh, signal systems into an e electronic warfare capability on Bombardier aircraft and Bombardier trains. And so you can take it from there because which Bombardier plane or which set of Bombardier planes were modified for the continuity of government exercises on 911. Over to you. Yeah, are you in the chat room, David? Yes. Yeah, take a look at that black Studebaker. What do you think? <clears throat> Hold on. No, no, I haven't done it yet, but you know me. If Jack Mack tells me I can do it, it'll be done today. Um, the thing that makes that car very, very rare, uh, and it's a nondescript car, nobody, that that's a real plain Jane car there. Nobody in their right mind would want it except for one thing. Did you notice what year it was? Uh, I can't see the picture of the of the car. Oh, it's right above Jason McLean. Oh, all right. Let me just go up a bit. And uh, okay, I would say that was a 1968. David, you're such a clutch. It's a 1942, and the thing is. Uh, uh, you guys from England had gotten the United States wrapped into the World War II as of 7 December of 41. Uh, that particular car, even though it's a 42, and they didn't make, they made very few 1942 automobiles. And that's according to uh, Pastor Clyde, well, it was Clydesdale in chapter, he hasn't read the chapter, of course, but uh, he was in the chapter driving, in fact, I haven't read the chapter, I've looked at the images that Craig put up, but I, my head hurts right now. It's That chapter was 50 pages, give or take, and I wrote it sort of in one sitting, and this is not all about me. It's all about Jason McLean and Bombardier, and you think they'd be better about uh, when they're going to take trains and have train accidents that are not accidents, you think they'd be smarter than in two successive trains, the Lac, Lac, Lac Megantic, uh, Megantic, I think that's it. Sherlock's here, she'll tell me. Lock Megantic and uh, the Spain train, in both cases, they had something unusual in the second car. And the uh, caboose was the second car in Lock Megantic. And the explosives were in the second car in the Spain train. So I think Jason McLean is probably going to have a sleepless weekend. I certainly hope so. And also, did you notice, David, that I took the liberty of giving Barry Swatero Punahou 79 until October 22nd to be out of the continental U.S.? Over to you. Yeah, now, did you do that in the chapter? Because I sped read it. But, um, yeah, as you know, 50 pages of uh, this brilliant uh, chip chaff material is, is heavy going. It's heavy to write, I imagine. It's hard to digest. But, of course, that's your intent, presumably, with the people it's pointed at. Yeah, as... 
Craig and whoever was receiving the safety copies, and that changed throughout the day, but typically it was Atomic Betty and uh, Mary M. Hall. Uh, and I, I started writing the day before, and sometime yesterday morning, I lost control of the chapter, and rather than get upset like I did two weeks ago when I ate a chapter, I decided I'm not going to let that bother me anymore. So I just started writing the chapter over, and as I started writing it over, almost all the details, including I'm looking at Clyde Holt right now and I'm smiling, because the chapter began as an aircraft was descending into Red Wing Minnesota Airport, which strangely is located in Wisconsin. You can't make this stuff up. If you look up the approach plate for the Red Wing Minnesota Airport, you will see that it's Red Wing Minnesota, but the runway's in Wisconsin. So I like to uh, you know, use facts, but it was my singular intent on this chapter to make it so long that it would bury these people over the weekend. And uh, you may or may not have seen, I sent an email out from my Hotmail account, and it went to NTSB and the Department of Justice and all these other people that are propping up the loser. And I think that uh, we're getting close to a tipping point regarding the Benghazi thing, and it's not a matter of us alone. Uh, the special operations veterans presented a 60-foot long petition to reopen the uh, Benghazi deal. And uh, I slipped the name in chapter, whatever that was, chapter 22. And I don't even remember the name I slipped in there, but I think it was David U-B-B-E-N. And I like to Google bait these people. Uh, and I think we're gonna find that uh, Hillary Clinton and Barry Sotero Sub Punahou 79 uh, become victims of Google baiting just like Janet Napolitano did. But what do you want to tell us about Bombardier and their sloppy train wreck? Um, okay, Phil, I'm just going to fire off a post which is 1623, so it'll come to you on your email and then pick up um, a piece of it. Just give me, can you just keep uh, yakking for five minutes or three minutes while I do this? Oh, I can do better than that. But just to, here, I'll set my timer for five minutes and I'll come up for air when it rings or I hear your cheery voice again. Just looking at the world's most dangerous chat room, starting with uh, our man about Atlanta, who has some nice sunglasses and a middle digit for Hillary and Barry Swatero, Punahou 79. Uh, he shows up here as Bucky Badger, but when he's on a mission, it's uh, Barry M. Hall, as in Barry M. Hall. And of course, at the other end, forming bookends, oh, wait a minute, that's time for a little musical interlude. <clears throat> and I'd put up the music, but YouTube gets upset whenever I do that, and then Craig yells at me. So <clears throat> let me clear my throat. <clears> oh, <throat> <Old> friends, <clears throat> didn't clear it, did I? <clears throat> Sit on the park bench like bookends. A newspaper blows through the grass falls on the old shoes of the old men. Old men, summer companions, these old friends. Uh, anyway, that's a nice song. And take a look at this picture. Now, I'm lagging, I know, because uh, Jack Mack, who is high tech, he makes fun of me. Because <clears throat> I can't, my, I guess my uh, computer is slower than everyone else's. But I'm looking at the gathering at Vino in the Valley. <clears throat> something that was not even apparent to some of the people that attended, which reminded me, this guy, that guy was at Vino in the Valley. And you, did you notice we forgot to say a prayer at dinner? I didn't notice. <laughs> I did, because I had to ask you if you would be willing to, and you said yes, and then I forgot to ask you. Uh, did I forget to ask him? Because <clears throat> I don't think it's uh, pleasant to pray before eating. I don't think it's mandatory, because you can... Pray quietly, too. You don't have to draw attention to yourself. But uh, I fully intended to take advantage of Pastor Clyde Holt and his uh, ability to invoke the presence of God to our meal. But the presence of God was at our meal, and anybody there felt it. And uh, everybody there who is not an Able Danger member, I guess you've been drafted, by the way, since you were driving the car in Chapter 22. Uh, the people at the table who were not Able Danger participants thoroughly enjoyed it too. And Wednesday night, two days ago, 
I was at a Bible study at John and Kay's. For those of you who are here, you met John and Kay at Vino in the Valley. And uh, everybody local, uh, John and Kay, uh, Jim and Sharon, and Mary and Phil, uh, they all said if we ever do it again, that they certainly would appreciate the opportunity to join us. And they don't mean like join if somebody else is buying. They mean they appreciated everybody's company. And I have to say that uh, the two biggest question marks in my mind is this uh, Plum City Plunge was coming down the track, staring me in the headlights. Uh, I was wondering how a member of my family may like it or not like it. That was a pleasant surprise. And the other was Agent McCheese. Uh, and Agent McCheese was really a pleasant surprise because he's a master mechanic and he took one look at the uh, Tillman's ghost and told me why it was overheating and he's absolutely crapped in. So uh, Hammer McCheese, thank you. And uh, yesterday or the day before when I last drove uh, Tillman's ghost, it was running at 170 degrees, which I'd say is pretty ideal since it's a 160 or 165, I think it's 160 thermostat. And uh, if the weather is good tomorrow, Tillman's Ghost and the 36th Dead are going to UFO days. In fact, I bet you somebody's going to put it up. Oh, there's a picture. This picture was taken, and that's uh, Agent Little Sis, Agent Bean, Agent Atomic Betty, Chips in the background giving a Masonic sign. I think that's hilarious. Uh, then that's uh, the guy standing up with silver hair as Agent RPM. Uh, Agent Tillman is crouching down. He's sitting on a powder keg filled with C4 and some primers. And then the guy in the Able Danger shirt, uh, we didn't give him an Able Danger name, but he's a young kid, nice guy, works in the cheese factory. And uh, he stayed up till 4.30 Saturday, well, it'd be Sunday morning. Uh, I was in bed long before that, but it was a good gathering. Everybody enjoyed it from soup to nuts. And David, are you back yet? Because my timer's about ready to go off. Uh, yes, Phil. So I'll just read the email that's gone out now under your illustrious name, uh, Plum City Able Danger .net, July 25. No, it's 26, so there's an error there, but uh, to err is human, to forgive divine. United States Marine Field McConnell has linked Jason McLean, former special assistant in the office of the Prime Minister of Canada, 2000 to 2002 to the development of a signal systems EW, EW is electronic warfare, portable repeater wireless service for spread betting and money laundering by organized crime groups, in brackets, CAI private equity, and the spot fixing of body counts for the Bombardier train crash in Spain. So I don't know if you answered that question, Phil, but uh, these guys have been modifying Boeing planes and trains for an appearance, a virtuoso appearance at mass casualty events. So could you explain which particular Boeing aircraft were modified for the continuity of government exercise on 911 and what their role was? Over to you. Uh, <clears throat> off the top of my head, the aircraft that were modified were two Darling Drunyan uh, drones. Darling Drunyan was the felonious uh, female who worked the crooked tanker deal. She took advantage of her former office. Uh, she was an Air Force procurement. And when she was hired away into industry uh, at Boeing, she took advantage of her connections to the Pentagon. And she tried to uh, make some money on upgrading the tanker fleet. And as I sit here today, in fact, I'm sitting on my derriere. That's French. I'm not sure. I mean, French people are great. I know some people that speak French, including you, David, but I'm not so sure the French fascists are our friends. Uh, French fascists include people that are members of the French American Foundation, such as Bruce Marcy, Clinton party of two beards, and my sister, who's changed her name from Christine to Chris Marcy. Um, she's going to have to change a lot more than that. And by the way, David, I think Courtney Banks of NSAWW, she's one of the ghoul gals of 1950 Old Gallows Road. And if Courtney Banks happens to be listening to this, 
you know, you guys just make it too easy. Uh, why in the world would you put a business that is deals in treason and selling out America, why would you put it on a road that's so colorful, Old Gallows Road? Gee, I think that some of those um, radical militant lesbians uh, at 1950 Old Gallows, uh, I think little by little they're going to be doing the Janet Napolitano two-step and exiting the building before the lightning strikes. And if you don't know what lightning I'm talking about, look at towards the end of chapter 22. Uh, that was a brilliant display of God's power. And I can't remember for sure who sent me that image late last night, but I think it was excuse me, Barry M. Hall of the Atlanta branch. So David, the airplanes that were illegally modified uh, either in Abbotsford, British Columbia or Fort Collins, Loveland, Colorado, strangely enough, the airport where they uh, super modified two A3 Sky Warriors owned by Raytheon, uh, that airport's now been shut down. I wonder why it was open from 2001 until we started writing about it. You never know who's got the power anymore. Uh, and also, uh, right here, I've got a very nice letter. It's, uh, in fact, I'm going to pass one to, uh, I wonder if I've got one for you. I think I do. Uh, I've got a letter. It's an open letter from Field McConnell to interested parties at a local church. Uh, is your name on here? Nope, it's not. But John and Kay, uh, when you're not busy listening, you can read that letter. And I won't talk any more about this letter, except this letter is... Uh, I've had some people ask me why I'm no longer attending church services at a certain location. And uh, I've had about seven people ask me, and I've given them a consistent answer. I said, I'll answer the question uh, to everybody in the same way in writing, so there's no confusion. And I've noticed in my life of 63 years and seven months, or is it nine months? 12 take away three, nine months. Gee, that's a gestation period of not only a bovine, but another species of which I'm fond. Um, so David, the aircraft that Darlene Drunyan, I think I've got her name right, she was in prison for a while over this. Um, and I didn't say over you, that was a song by Gary Puckett, Union Gap, that goes a lot like this. Why am I losing sleep over you? Recall, recalling precious moments we knew. That was about 1969, but you didn't ask me that, you asked me about the Boeings, here they come. Uh, oh, Field, can I just interrupt? I, I'm looking for the Bombardier planes. Oh, yes. The oh, well, okay. Well, I'll give you both. I'll give you the Bombardier first. Uh, out of the fifth wing at Goose Bay, Labrador, uh, was a white CL-604 electronic warfare uh, jet that showed up over United 93, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, a swan dive, a lady named Susan McElwain. Uh, a gentleman farmer and a guy working at a junkyard all saw the little white jet with no markings flying in close proximity to the uh, 757 United 93, which was flying upside down at treetop level uh, because of the Strangler suite of illegal modifications. And just to make sure that the aircraft got destroyed when they wanted it destroyed, Colonel Russell Williams, and notice I didn't say anything at all about Mary Elizabeth uh, what's her name? Harriman. Like, is that right? Let me think about it. Avril Harriman. Yeah, that's right. Mary Elizabeth Harriman and uh, Judge Jennifer McKinnon. I never mentioned those names because David Johnston, uh, just Jason McLean, and Glamour Boy would have a hip, hissy fit if I were to suggest that the little white jet with no numbers, no flag, and no brain at the wheel was flown by Russell Williams. Uh, he was the poster boy for the Canadian forces until he got found with a treasure trove of the products of ladies and girls, uh, underpinnings in a variety of pastel colors. And this pervert who was, uh, he was once hauling the queen, you know, the German goose stepper and her flatulent husband who has a son with wiggly ears who's a pedophile who apparently sired a guy who someday could be king because he's got royal blood, unfortunately, for everybody in England and Germany, the royal blood that that prince has is Spanish in, uh, in origin. So we got some Spanish blood in the royals, and we got a Spanish train wreck done with the blessings of the royals. And there, I don't know what a minion is, 
but maybe it's their minions in Canada who've been doing all this garbage. And uh, the chickens are coming home to roost for the Bombardier uh, blow-up. I didn't say blow-up dolls. I said blow-up trains. But you can blow up dolls too. But they keep blowing up these trains like, uh, I know how to say this, Lock Magantic. How'd I do? I think that's close. Anyway, the Lock Magantic train, car number two was a remote control caboose sandwiched between two locomotives. And uh, over there in Spain, the second car is where the explosives blew at the tightest part of the corner. I'm not sure, maybe somebody in the chat room knows the speed limit on that curve was 50. I think the train was going 120, and at the uh, at the sharpest part of the turn, uh, an explosion occurred in the second second car, which blew the train off the tracks. And we're going to blow Hillary and uh, Barry Swatero, uh, Punho 79. We're going to blow their love train right off the tracks because going back to uh, September 11, Bombardier has been doing a lot of evil things. Notice I didn't say anything about evil woman by by ELO, or Black Magic Woman by Santana, uh, but we'll cover that in chapter 23, which if I were to write it today, I'd probably die at my typewriter, because um, I'm tired. But anyway, uh, the Canadian 604 and the Canadian 144 electronic warfare jets uh, were at the fifth wing in Goose, and at least two of them were seen operating uh, with signals between themselves and the two uh, European AWACS, uh, it's actually properly called NATO AWACS. So you got two NATO A330s, one off New York, one off D.C., talking to a couple of Canadian um, on-scene commander, OSC. That's what they were. They were the shooter eyeball. Uh, in other words, they wanted to make sure they, who are they? They're the 100 people originally that had the plans for 9-11. Uh, due to two deaths, we're down to 98 now. Um, but basically, I think the central players are uh, referred to in our brilliant, that's your choice of words, not mine, chapter uh, 22. And I think it's strange that you say it's a brilliant chapter when you haven't read it, David, but uh, that chapter 22 will accomplish the purpose for which I sent it, and it will not return to me void. And if that sounds a lot like Isaiah 5511, then I guess a Canadian electronic warfare jet from Goose Bay sounds a lot like Russell Williams. And uh, David, one more thing about Bombardier. They were the principal benefactors when Sukhoi's Superjet 100 slammed into the Indonesian sheer rock wall last May 9th. And I shared that information directly with Colonel uh, Nikolai Blednev, who is the Russian Air Force, um, whatever you want to call it, military attaché to the United States of America. And he apparently shared it with uh, GRU, which is the updated version of KGB. And notice I didn't say IUD or VFD. So make sure you, if you run this tape back and anybody said IUD or VFD, obviously they've been tinkering with my tape, just like Bombardier tinkered with the Sukhoi Superjet. And I wrote directly to Sukhoi and I wrote directly to the Russian uh, air attaché saying that I think some fat guy in Omaha is screwing around with your jet. David, did I answer your question about the Bombardier uh, CL 144 and CL 604? Otherwise, I can give you a lot more. Uh, yes, Phil, but I believe you also identified the Bombardier because of uh, some subtle uh, display of shadows uh, over New York. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. And my phone's ringing, so let's be unprofessional and see who this is. Um, I'll call these guys back later. Uh, I don't know who they are, but they're local. Yeah, the, uh, you could tell that as the uh, Bombardier little white jet turned to the left, which was to the north, uh, the shadows cast on the tailplane and also the fuselage uh, were consistent with a CL-604, which in that day in history would have been operated by the wing, fifth wing up at Goose Bay, Labrador. Is that the answer you're looking for? Yes, that's right, Phil. So we've got a, a Bombardier um, 604 or something similar over the crash scene of United 93. And essentially, they're crime scene management devices uh, interacting with ground devices uh, produced and developed by Signal Systems for Jason McLean. So the next uh, interesting element in that post that just went out this morning is Jason McLean Signal Systems. 
we provide a diverse range of communications. Phil, can you just, I'll, I'll just attend to this. Can you just uh, continue? Just hang on a second, David. He's uh, on a phone call. Did you hear me, David? Okay, I'll do that. I don't think I don't think David is hearing. Hey, David. David. Hello, uh, Phil. Do you on? Yeah, but don't ever worry if I go away. My phone rang and I had to take a call, so I will never leave you. Or I yeah. will never forsake you, and I'll never, never trade you. And I'm not to be nice. I don't think David is hearing. Yeah, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, and I'll never, never train you not to be nervous. Yeah, and my phone rang, so I did the same. Oh, that's okay. We're well, Clyde was sitting here talking to the audience. In fact, I'll put the camera on Clyde in case you and I call each other and have to be away from. Uh, but anyway, uh, where, what were you discussing? I think I answered your question about the CL604 from the Fifth Wing. And uh, I'm going to go. Yeah. I was out of the chat room because I'm forwarding your message to a bunch of the goons in the government, encouraging them to come to our radio show. Right. Yeah. So I was going on to the second uh, paragraph of the post that went out this morning. Jason McLean Signal Systems. We provide a diverse range of communications and IT services to an equally diverse range of industries and customers. Whether you need a comprehensive package of two-way radios and portable repeaters for a mountaintop film shoot, or an integrated phone and data service package for a downtown office, we can design and maintain a secure communication solution that will meet your needs. Our customers to date include clients from the following industries. Now, I'll come to that in a moment, Phil. But let's go back and see if there's any crime that would be conveniently and appropriately associated with McLean's comprehensive package of two-way radios and portable repeaters for a mountain top film shoot. Well, it's not quite at the top of a mountain, but it is in the French Alps. Do you remember a crime in the French Alps uh, field that was rather bizarre involving a former uh, New Zealand RAF officer peddling furiously down a mountainside to report a murder? Do you remember that? Yeah, it was a murder of somebody that might have been a Pakistani living in England and his wife, his two daughters, and his mother-in-law, which reminds me a lot of the 1961 song by Ernie K. Doe called Mother-in-Law. It started out like this. The worst person I know, mother-in-law, mother-in-law. Anyway, David, over to you. Did I get it right about the man, the woman, the kids, and the mother-in-law? Yeah, I can't remember all the names, but the surname is Al Healy. And there were two girls, one uh, who was pistol whipped and shot in the shoulder, and the other hid in absolute terror beneath her mother's, her dead mother's skirt for a few hours. And the combined intelligence of the French Gestapo didn't discover her, albeit theoretically the mountainside was being covered by investigators. And then there's some aerial images or photographs of the crime scene. But it turns out that the man was working with, now let me see, Surrey Satellite Systems, I think it was, that makes small satellites that carry the signal processing uh, technology of McDonnell Detweiler in Richmond, British Columbia. And McDonald Detweiler provided the electronic warfare development services to Signal Systems, Jason, uh, Jason McLean, Signal Systems. So that's very interesting. So I think what we have now is a very plausible explanation for a sophisticated contract hit in the French Alps where the crime scene was controlled by a combination of satellite sensors from McDonald Detweiler and portable repeaters and two-way radios on the mountainside to track the victims and the killers in and out of the crime scene. Well, of course, some of the victims didn't leave the crime scene, but the almost as important as the contract hit is the synchronicity of the spin, i.e., they use the electronic warfare devices to inject the story that they want the public to hear uh, with 
the killing. So I would say, uh, and we can do a reverse analysis later, but I'll bet you feel that the story was out in the mainstream media within an hour of that guy peddling down into the town to alert the police. And the police were mobilized, I think, from Grenoble or Toulouse. So they didn't arrive at the crime scene till seven or eight hours after the killings. And this, of course, is a classic signature of these people because they really don't want a professional police force to arrive too close to the actual crime because the principal function of the red teams and the blue teams is to spoliate evidence at the crime scene, which they did to a certain extent. So an integrated phone and data, data service package, oops, sorry, it's just slipped out of my view, um, for a downtown office. Now, I can't think of a more appropriate office for the particular first live broadcast mass snuff film in human history than the Salomon building or building number seven in New York. So I think again we can make an aggressive spoliation of guilt here field and infer that the Salomon building okay. and the Twin Towers were all equipped with portable repeaters and two-way radio systems by signal systems which would be consistent given that the Salomon building, which is the name that building number seven was known under, uh, contained the principals who founded the CAI private equity group, that is the bookmaker for these contract killings. So amazingly enough, one of the special investors in the CAI private equity group is of course the late General Alexander Haig, who had probably an almost sexualized obsession with body counting, uh, dating right back to the Vietnam War. And maybe you, you feel, could tell us a little bit about when America started counting bodies as a proxy for strategic policy uh, around the world. Over to you. I can't tell you for sure, but I'm guessing it was 1965, <clears throat> uh, which was four years before the song Over You by Gary Puckett, The Union Gap, was popular. I think I already gave you the opening line. Why am I losing sleep over you, reliving precious moments we knew? I love that word precious. It's precious to me. Uh, and I can't remember if it's precious bodily fluids or if it's heavenly bodily fluids that uh, Colonel Jack Ripper uh, spoke in the movie that came out in about 1963 called, somebody will get it, I can't remember. It's not Seven Days in May. Ah, Dr. Strangelove. Not to be confused with our able danger agent down in uh, Austin, Texas, Dr. Stained Glove. Uh, but if anybody doesn't think we have an agent who's an MD in Texas, then you haven't ever Googled uh, pastel plus IOC plus chips plus Hamish plus stained glove and I'd do it for you but I'm busy sending uh, the post that David just posted. I'm attaching it right now and I had to go to Hotmail to do it. That's why I sound like I'm giving you a disjointed answer David. But I tried to forward your thing from uh, Yahoo and I'm telling these people that we're on talking about Bombardier right now and inviting them to come in here and get a stomach ache. Uh, but David, if you could speak for three minutes, I will, oh, by the way, I've got this thing up in front of me right now, uh, and this, I think I've sent this, in fact, what I'll do is I'll send this, <clears throat> when I send this thing live, the email within the next three minutes, several people out there will get copies, and anybody who gets a copy of this can post it if I don't. So David, uh, did you ask me a question, and if so, did I come anywhere close to answering it? Uh, I just wanted to know when this uh, notion that body count would serve as a useful proxy for America's foreign policy reared its ugly head. Over to you. It was when uh, Alexander Haig was over in Vietnam. He was over there twice, I think. Uh, he was over there uh, working for General Westmoreland at one point. And if you're wondering how I know that General Westmoreland was hauling drugs out of the Golden Triangle, uh, I know that simply because 
uh, we were stationed at Hickam Air Force Base in Honolulu, Hawaii uh, from 66 to 69. And a lot of the narcotics coming out of the Golden Triangle were shipped in plastic bags inside the body cavities of dead U.S. servicemen. And General Hunter H. Harris IV, who fraudulently got me into the Naval Academy, thank you very much, General Harris, wherever you are decomposing. Uh, I don't really like four-star generals that kill U.S. servicemen, white, black, brown, or red, because they want to get a little bit of a bigger retirement, and that includes Alexander Haig and his octo pussies. Um, I say that the way I say it, because octo means eight, and these guys are cowards. Uh, David, did I answer it yet? I can't even remember what the question was. I'm tired from writing last night. Uh, yeah, so so I think um, there was a famous, and the name escapes me, battle in Vietnam where the number 592 popped up, where General Alexander Haig, obviously very brave, marshaled his forces. They were heavily outnumbered, numbered, allegedly, and the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese regular army presumably left 592 dead on the battlefield, so presumably uh, General Haig, um, sent out a number of people because, you know, 592 people is quite a fair sized number to count. And that was sent back to the United States of America for consumption on the mainstream news that 592 dead Vietnamese was really a glorious victory. In one sense, it is. Of course, in another sense, it's an embarrassment that a great nation should count bodies uh, not only amongst its enemies but amongst its friends and present that to the public as some indication of a sophisticated and efficient uh, foreign policy. Uh, it doesn't actually, con it's not exactly consistent because in Benghazi, it appears that the body count of Marines and uh, uh, Chris Stevens, the ambassador, Obama's ambassador to Libya, uh, as far as, uh, they seem to, um, what was it, hunt with the horses and chase the hares? Mixed metaphor, but I'm getting out of touch of my old metaphor base. Um, so I think Hillary's got quite a problem in terms of uh, cherry-picking body counts. There are certain body counts that matter. I suppose Vince Foster is one. And certain body counts that don't matter, which is the P. Benghazi. So in each case, I think we're going to find a very characteristic signature that where the body count doesn't matter for Hillary Clinton, you're probably going to find the presence of Jason McLean signal systems, uh, portable repeaters, and two-way wirelesses operating in electronic warfare mode, which of course includes the disruption of communications between Benghazi and the kind of people in the United States military who might actually do something useful, as opposed to this useless twit who's sitting in the White House, uh, but no doubt we'll be able to winkle him out fairly soon. Anyway, let's go on with um, Jason McLean's signal systems and see where he provides this covert electronic warfare service, which could be instantly switched from a benign service to a spread betting on body count service, where the legitimate players inside that particular scene are just baffled about what suddenly happened to them. Remember, in Vancouver, they call this area Hollywood North, and some of the biggest film production studios and probably some of the best special effects people are to be found in Vancouver. It seems like one of the companies that specialized in special effects was Starnet at 425 Carroll Street, and regrettably, the special effects there included the associated scenes when an adult would find uh, Carroll Street, egged on by online betting from, I believe, 60 countries, uh, presumably where one group of people would be betting on raising the level of torture at slightly more favorable, would be betting on lowering it. But the people taking the bets would then instruct their agents either to ramp up the torture and the brutality or ramp it down a bit. In some cases, maybe the child might even survive, but of course, scarred for life. Anyway, so the film and television productions, I would suggest the core of snuff and S&M film was moved out of the United States uh, into 
Vancouver to be outside the reach of RICO, Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organization, which was introduced in 1970. Utilities and independent power producers. Now, just remind me, Field, there was a major power outage along the East Coast and one at the Super Bowl. Can you just talk about that to remind my fading memory? I don't remember the one on the East Coast unless it was a long time ago, but the one at the Super Bowl was a spread betting deal uh, where some people in France and City of London were probably laughing about how long they could turn out the biggest television event of the year. I think he, it, I, I'm throwing this out to the chat room, but it's my opinion that there's nothing bigger on TV all year long than the Super Bowl. I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, Pastor Clyde Holt, who is a little tired out because last night he was driving a 1940 Studebaker, uh, and it's a little unclear from Chapter 22 whether it was really a 42 Studebaker or a 40 Studebaker because pictures of both cars appeared. They were both black uh, and only one license plate, and the license plate was a Wisconsin Marine Corps veteran WW2 KIA, which means killed in action. Now, how could two different Studebakers have two different or have the same license plate? Okay, this is really high tech, so anybody who's a spy for a three letter agency, go to the water cooler. <clears throat> if you want to use two vanity plates, legitimate ones, on two different cars, only put one on each car. Shh. <laughs> Don't tell Comey or Holder. Oh, by the way, Janet Napolitano, I think, is going to be the highest placed public disservant that has ever fallen victim to a form of intelligence known as Google bait. Uh, it sounds like Watergate, but it's not. Google bait was uh, created by a troubled guy from Wisconsin who randomly looked into a 1976 Philadelphia phone book and saw these entries on page 13. DHS D Mort, capital B, HSEEP, Crisis Actors, Vision Box, and FIELD, MCCONNELL. Now, uh, I know that we might have some people from DHS or NTSB because I, I just sent an email and everybody at Livestream saw me hit the send button. Uh, if anybody gets that email, and I know it went to Bucky Badger and some other people, maybe you could post that and we could all chortle, because here we are, we're like a giant octopus or squid. We're everywhere, and yet, with the exception of 401 Main Street, Plum City, Wisconsin, 54761, population 597 today, and 596 tomorrow if some DHS shooter gets lucky. Uh, David, I, I don't know what they're going to do because the truth is coming down the tracks faster than the Lake Megantique MMA BFD or the Bombardier second car blowout in Spain where the driver of the train couldn't believe he was looking at 194. Over to you, David. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, I mean, they've got a simulation of the train at Lac uh, Megantique which shows that the train and the wagons trundled into Lac Megantique. And then I, I think I almost see an explosion on the simulation, which of course would be folly on their part, but you know, these, we're not dealing with the sharpest knives in the drawer. So that the wagons stop in Lac Megantique, right? Allegedly derailed. But I think the train actually stopped them. It parked the, it parked the wagons in Lac Megantique and then detonated or ignited incendiaries underneath the wagons because they would have known roughly what the population area was. Uh, in particular, there was an accumulation of victims in the pub where, where the owner and his wife of the pub left just before the, the train uh, hove into town. And then the train, the locomotives, trundles on and parks just beyond Lac Megantique, presumably with the electronic warfare caboose modified by signal systems to monitor the response uh, of the firefighters, etc., 
and run or participate as a portable repeater the data feed to the international spread betting and spot fixing and body counting ghouls. I mean, it's just a, a brilliant formula. And of course, for a lot of people who want to see the humiliation of a great industry. Now, let me back up here. I'm a mechanical engineer. I went to Cambridge University for what it's worth. I got a first class degree. And back then, I'm I was proud of being an engineer and having serious challenges put on my desk for me to throw my brain at and fix, right? So I strongly object to some idiot telling me, for example, that carbon dioxide is the principal driver of catastrophic anthropogenic global uh, climate change when it's actually a trace gas which is barely measurable. So we have what I believe is the baptism of post-normal science by organized crime where hundreds of thousands of people are dying because these people are not swinging by a gibbet on old gallows roads. So the faster we move on that, uh, the better. But anyway, by the by, the next outfit, oh, yeah, coming back to independent power producers and utilities. So the spread bet for the Super Bowl field, I believe, would have been something like, we can, that is the bookmaker, induce or impute a power outage of... 33 minutes plus or minus two minutes at the Super Bowl, place your bets. And classically, what you do with a spread bet, there are over betters and under betters. So these dumb, rich pension funds, some of them where you've got complete amateurs in charge of assets around $90 billion, which is the case of the British Columbia Investment Management Corporation, or in the case of the Teachers Pension Fund, $500 billion, right, which is more money than most people can count zeros, that's actually the retirement benefits of that little W blank, 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 ER guy in the White House, because he was a lecturer on constitutional law at the University of Chicago. So. These kind of people get the chance through a corrupt bookmaker, CAI Private Equity Group, to place bets over and under the period of the outage estimated by the bookmaker, right? And I think the bookmaker comes up with, let's say, uh, what do we say, 35 plus or minus two minutes or something like that. So now what the bookmaker is able to do by going to Signal Systems and Jason... Um, McLean is, okay, you take care of an outage in this range and you can hire saboteurs to make sure that the outage does not exceed 35 minutes and is not less than 33 minutes. If you do that, we're going to pay you $10 million, let's say, if you can make it on the nail at 34 minutes, and that's the spot fixing part. So the spread, in a sense, defines the event that's going to happen. The bookmaker has the power to create a power outage at the Super Bowl between 33 minutes and 35 minutes. The spot fixing is a way for the bookmaker to reward the particular saboteurs who stick the event inside the range and the spread and put it on a particular second or a particular minute. So I'm very confident now that the people who were running the book on the power outage for the Super Bowl were actually in contact, in real-time contact, with Jason McLean's signal systems to get the spot fixed within that range. The next uh, group of clients served by signal systems and their electronic warfare services is charter aviation companies. Well, very quickly, Field, uh, what I put in square brackets there is Christine Mars's Conair 911. Would you say that Christine Mars's Conair fits the definition of a charter airline? Over to you. Uh, I'm not very good at definitions. I'm really good at going to dinner parties at Vino in the Valley, which is open tonight. In fact, they open at 4 o'clock and it's 10 to 2 and all. Um, yeah, it's a charter operation. The only problem is uh, that JPATS or the U.S. Marshal Service uh, airline, whatever you want to call it, has endless pockets because even though a lot of American voters, which reminds me, 
that's a waste of time. Uh, but a lot of American voters who think that they're either a Republican or they're a Democrat, they're misguided because there's no such thing as two different parties. Uh, those parties are just a flim-flam distraction, and the United States government is funded through the City of London and the global bankers. And back to the guy uh, who inhabits 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, I think you said he was a W blank, 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 R, and I don't know why you hesitated to say wanker, because most people in the United States of America don't know what a wanker or a shirt lifter are. Uh, for the benefit of anyone in America, outside of Washington, D.C., of course, because you are all wankers and shirtlifters, uh, might even throw in tosser. Uh, but anyway, for the people in America who are good people, meaning they live in one of the 50 states uh, as opposed to the sovereign territory originally known as Rome on the Potomac, which was a Vatican uh, outhold, or I think that, that's what you call it, um, see, the Vatican set up Washington, D.C., and they may have had some help from some global bankers, but uh, the Vatican is uh, controlling a lot of things. That's why Craig Peterson, I believe, put a picture of Thomas J. Smolich on that very nice image. It was one of the first ones uh, in Chapter 22, where it looked like my sister, uh, who has changed her name from Christine Marcy to Chris Marcy, which reminds me, anybody out there that likes to Google, why don't you see the difference in hits for Christine Marcy uh, versus Chris Marcy? And I bet you that in the next 48 hours to four days, that'd be 96 hours, I bet there's going to be a lot of hits because it looks like uh, Barry Swatero, Punahou 79, is coming out of the rear of her red uh, Iowa C which I find interesting that uh, however Craig Peterson put that together, the fact that he's got my obese sister uh, squirting a Hershey out of a red IOC is interesting to me statistically because in the very first chapter of the very first book, the very first reference to an article of clothing worn by a person who's not male or kickstand equipped was a flaming red IOC. And I did not pick the flaming red IOC when my son Cole and I were having fish and chips at Vinegan's. And you rang me up on the phone, David, to gush uh, all about David uh, Gerald DeCanto and his nickname Fish, which was on his Porsche. Uh, I asked you what what you thought I was eating, and you gave one of those stare, you know, deer in the headlights type answer uh, because you had forgotten that the most popular pub fare in England is fish and chips, and that's what I was eating, and that's where the name Chips came from for the character that seems to be like me somewhat. Uh, actually, I'm a doppelganger of Chips, which reminds me, I love the picture that somebody gave me of the doppelganger known as uh, Johnson Shaft, who is part Choctaw Cherokee. But David, did you ask me a question? Because if you did, it's certainly deserving of my attention. I'll try to focus now and give you an answer if you'll just repeat the question in a laconic uh, and direct fashion. Over to you. Uh, you know us, Phil. Uh, I can never remember the questions, but you always provide wonderful answers. Let's just go on with the list of clients for Signal Systems. So we've covered... Uh, I mean, sorry. David, I, rem uh, David I remember the question. You asked uh, me... Okay. You asked me if JPATS fit the definition of a chartered airline. Yes. It does. And my sister ran it. Uh, she was in charge of that airline, and that's why she called me in December of 1988 and said, Houston, we have a problem. And I fixed her problem by telling her to drone the aircraft, and that way her prisoners could not overwhelm the cockpit because the cockpit is, well, all the airliners... Uh, operating today with glass cockpits are drones. Now, if anybody in the National Transportation Safety Board, like the 39-year-old woman who went out for the crash scene and didn't even detect the fact that it was a phony crash, uh, and she's in charge of the NTSB, and her, her husband's a software engineer, which raises some red flags among people who know the difference between flaming red and uh, blood red and going down. Of course, blood red and going down was a song by Tanya Tucker. Um, somebody's probably going to slap it up there. If I had to guess, I would guess it would be CCW, John Pruka. But, David, the answer to your question in a very laconic fashion is yes. Excellent. Well, 
um, what uh, Christine Marcy, your sister, could do with Con Air in a joint venture with Signal Systems electronic warfare capability, she could at will decide where a future crime scene needed a certain ratio of red team and blue team players, and literally the day off, fly in a team of furloughed uh, prisoners or parolees out of a jail with a team of people ostensibly marshals but maybe fitted out with FBI uniforms. And she would be able to determine, let's say, outside the Pentagon lawn, what ratio of blue team and red team players she needed to ensure that a particular body count, and I believe there were 128, uh, someone could perhaps Google that, inside the Pentagon, including the U.S. Navy Command Center, Captain Gerald DeConto, and I'm absolutely convinced, Field, that as the weaponry was moving in to the Pentagon and the proximity fuse triggered the blast outside, uh, that triggered uh, sympathetic explosions inside the building, carefully placed. They knew who would be in the building because AMEC, the British company, had placed them there. So your sister would have uh, basically exploited the advice you gave her very efficiently, if I'm right, uh, into uh, being able to dial up a casualty rate or body count at any particular crime scene and then make sure that the evidence was taken away so there'd be very little chance until we came along and popped into the cloud and then out of the cloud. And I imagine just looking back at your chapters, I, I think uh, the bad guys will wish they never invented the term cloud because... I think when you get inside the cloud, the amount of chaff coming out in all directions is totally bewildering, even for the most expert. Everybody, that's a compliment, Phil. Well, I was just smiling. Um, yeah, I was smiling, David. I took that as a compliment. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I try to be humble about this, and I think I achieved that, even though Chips is the most arrogant guy that ever walked in an erect fashion. Of course, he's an erect primate, so you'd expect him to walk in an erect fashion. Otherwise, he wouldn't. You have to stand up before you can walk, and you have to take a step before you're walking. And, of course, being uh, the ever, um, the cunning linguist that he is, Agent, Agent Chips can refer to uh, people at 1600 Pennsylvania as erect primates with no fear that they'll sue me, because first they'd have to ask somebody, and it couldn't ask Paula Reed because she wouldn't know, Valley Jarrett wouldn't know. I don't know if they have anybody in the White House that know, and I, I don't think they should call it the White House anymore, but that's, I think they should call it the outhouse, because that's what it's full of. But anyway, uh, some people probably wonder why my civil case that I filed in September of 2008 is uh, number 1600, as in civil case 1 colon 08. When I said colon, I don't mean Powell, I mean colon as in the, uh, it's like a period, a comma, a colon, and a parentheses that kind of thing, or a bracket for David, since he doesn't like parentheses, which is a parenthetic uh, comment on my, my part. But uh, someday somebody will scratch their head and say, how did that civil case 1600 get the number 1600? Uh, and maybe in chapter 25, I'll tell you. But David, we need to get chapter 23, 24, and 25 uh, to be lethal and lengthy, and I say that because there's a party up in Canada who said that the chapter, uh, I think she just read it today, but she said it was rather a lengthy um, portion, and if someone were to Google pastel plus IOC plus chips plus Hamish plus lengthy portion, a whole lot of stuff would come up, and I'm going to go Google it right now as soon as I'm done Googling something else, and what I was going to Google here, David, I've already forgotten, but it must have been important or I wouldn't have called Google up. Uh, and uh, by the way, history will probably remember somebody from 401 as the uh, person who Googled Janet Napolitano. So David, over to you. Yeah, when you mentioned direct primate, uh, just to show you that I am human, at least half human, I remember I'd been in the Australian bush uh, looking for oil and gas for quite a few weeks. and. Um, you know, when you're in the bush and you're a normal man, you hunker, hanker, hun hunker, hanker after some feminine company. And I heard with my friends, there was a dance in town. I think it was, uh, let's see, well, the town was irrelevant. Um, so I put on my best jeans, had a shower, you know, shaved and got ready. Uh, I hadn't seen any women for weeks. And um, we rolled up at the dance 
And Australians are very peculiar because generally they don't uh, perform very well at dances as far as the women are concerned because the men go and drink and fight in one part of the bar and the women all gather together. So for an Englishman um, to get an opportunity to invite um, a woman to dance, this was huge for me. So I came in where the dance was held and there was a whole bunch of women and some really good looking women and I saw one who sort of half smiled at me and I started walking towards her and you know that phrase you just mentioned the erect primate yeah. something something took over and I was unable to ask her to dance because I was too embarrassed so I apparently my friend he nearly killed himself laughing I walked out the other end of the tent um, you know in as an erect primate uh, without asking this girl to dance. So I think I went back to the camp totally confused and bewildered and miserable. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, it, charter aviation. So we've covered Christine Marcy. Emergency services, service organizations. In square brackets, I put Obama's demort at Sandy Hook. Well, if you look at the exercise that was going on at Bridgeport, the lone gunman exercise, and how that got melded, if that's the right word, with images from Newtown in Sandy Hook, you can see that there is actually a very sophisticated man in the middle attack underway where communications between the Bridgeport exercise and theoretically the Sandy Hook murders are being mixed and matched by technology that I think we can now associate with signal systems. And, of course, it's the same routine. They don't want a forensic investigator or a detective to arrive at that crime scene, and they don't want the yellow tape to be put around the crime scene where no one gets in and out without authority uh, appropriate to the severity of the crime. So what they do is they don't put up yellow tapes anymore, uh, and I don't think they did at uh, the Sandy Hook Elementary School, they send in the mortician's field and the coroner. So you've got Wayne Carver, the state medical examiner, pontificating about what happened to these children, but the evidence itself, there is no evidence there was any autopsy done on the children, and that's exactly the same in the London Underground with that resilience mortuary parked in the Honourable Artillery Ground and body bits, and I believe this was to make up the body count, actually 500 body bits from the London Underground bombing were sent to Bosnia for examination. Now I don't know if you can get your head around that field, but what it seems to me is the 500 body bits represented um, excess over the spot that they wanted. So they sent the body bits to Bosnia, basically lost them. Uh, mining and exploration operations, dial the yield explosives. I don't know if you've ever seen the face wall of a, uh, of a, a, a deep, um, deep mining pit, but on a pretty regular basis, they blow the wall up and then the big truck come in and take the stuff away. So if signal systems is providing a two-way radio and portable repeater service to the mining and exploration industries, then they and their technicians would be profoundly familiar with the importance of getting your timing right, because you do not want a truck underneath a sloping face which is just subjected to an explosion because the truck is going to get squished. So I think Jason McLean and his signal systems people would be experts in coordinating dial yield explosives, whether it's in a downtown area or up a mountainside in a, uh, a mining operation. Construction companies. Well, AMEC, the British company, whose Canadian headquarters office was at 425 Carroll Street, immediately above the Starnet uh, online gaming and child pornography operation, was in building number seven, and in the Pentagon, both operating under contracts arranged by the construction department that used to be headed up by your sister Christine Marcy at the Department of Interior. 
And AMEC uh, would have been in a position with signal systems to uh, detonate and ignite uh, Dali yield bombs and get a very precise or pretty precise body count in both of those places. So it looks like they, did, they wanted no casualties in building number seven, and they wanted, and if I'm going from memory here, 128 casualties in the Pentagon. So they achieved both. Sports and recreation organizations. Well, CTV, Canadian television truck, which would have been equipped by signal systems for two-way communication and um, uh, portable uh, repeaters, was at the Boston bombing. And I'm very confident that the CTV truck relayed images back from the Boston bombing for use in spread betting and relayed the detonation and ignition signals to the pressure cooker bombs at the Boston bombing to make sure they got the money shot. Because these vermin, of course, they don't collect their money unless there's a camera pointed at the victim at the moment of death. And apparently in dirty films or pornography, then that has its own meaning, and I won't go into that. Ground transportation service providers, well, lo and behold, the train in Spain that crashed was a Bombardier-built train, and you can see that very obviously it's not so much that the driver was reckless, he had no control over the speed of that train as it neared the bend, meaning the electronic warfare backdoor into the Bombardier controls was actually taking the train well above the speed whereby it could safely negotiate that corner. But generally, it's very difficult to predict, depending on loading, center of gravity, moment of inertia, etc., and a given speed, at what time the train, or where precisely the train and the carriages are, are going to leave the rails. And you can see at, at the carriage, the second carriage, or the first carriage after the train, it's a bit difficult to judge, there is an ignition, and the white smoke is consistent with aluminum oxide which is the white powder that we see at ground zero when those incendiary devices go off. So what that does is it uncouples the train from the carriages and ensures that the carriages, now they have no pulling power, just fly off the rails. And it would be very interesting, and I'm sure there are, for the pervs, um, to look at the... There's the train. Uh, the radio, the, the, the camera, from the side on or the end on, because I think then you would see very precisely where the explosion or the incendiary devices were in that second carriage. The train will so be So let me now. just keep, go ahead, Phil. Oh, no, no, I'm, I was just talking to, oh, here comes the train. Whoop, oh, there it goes. And what we need to know is if anybody has... I posted yesterday at abledanger.net copy chat, David. I posted a video that was sent to me by one of our... Oh, we haven't given our body count lately, but uh, you remember, David, a couple months ago, we were always telling people how many Able Danger global uh, contributors we have, and we've just passed 237,500 this morning uh, when we picked up a guy who is allegedly from... Uh, he works in the Marriott at uh, whatever that... Where all the mafia guys hang around the Marriott in California. Oh, yeah, Marina Del Rey. Um, but we have an agent there now whose name is David. No, he goes by Dave. Dave Stewart. And he became the 237,500th member of Able Danger Global. There's a Masonic symbol for you. Uh, anyway, uh, we're growing in leaps and bounds and exponentially, even though there's a professor named George Lees, or is it less? Well, I don't know. According to Matthew 19.30, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So it doesn't really matter if George's name is Lees or less. Uh, it's more or less the same. Uh, and 
he or may may or may not be a contributor to uh, to uh, able danger, but he's from Kelso, Scotland. If Kelso, Scotland really exists, and I think it does. So, David, I'm sorry I interrupted. I was just taking great delight in watching this train come off the tracks. Not that people got hurt or the driver feels terrible because he thinks he's responsible. Uh, listen, that train driver is no more responsible for the train coming off the tracks uh, than Chick Burlingame was for his aircraft being blamed on hitting the Pentagon, even though it was uh, it was hit with Smack Sonic uh, in Whiskey 386A airspace off the coast of uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and that was under the control of Colonel Robert Needs and the specific first uh, class petty officer in the U.S. Navy that was keeping the F-16s from Fargo out of Whiskey 386 Alpha was a guy whose military call sign was Giant Killer. And uh, I guess in some ways we are, we are collectively giant killers when we got Janet Napolitano out of Washington, D.C. Uh, but I'm not going to be happy until she's followed by Barry Sotero, Punahou 79, and Hillary Diane Rodham Clinton, who really should be Hillary Diane Rodham J uh, Rockefeller. But uh, I digress. So, David, since I'm digressing and you're walking in an erect fashion, uh, and when you make the story up about going to the dance and then you couldn't ask for the dance because you thought you might impale yourself, uh, that reminds me that one time when I was on alert with the North Dakota Air National Guard, uh, we were watching some movie that apparently was having the same effect on everybody in the room because there's four of us in the room. And uh, somebody said, why don't you get up? This is before remotes, I guess. Why don't you get up and turn the volume up? And the first guy answered, I can't get up. <laughs> Whereupon the second, third, and fourth guy said, neither can I, neither can I. So uh, anyway, I guess, you know, some people would say, well, why do you talk about that? Well, simply because it's true. And that's what we do here is we talk about the truth, even if it's embarrassing, even if it's offensive to some people. Frankly, I find the deliberate murder or wrongful death of innocent civilians, be they Kazakhs, Somalians, Indonesians, Koreans, Americans, or even Canadians. I find that offensive. And if it takes uh, some offensiveness on our half to out offense the offensive parties, uh, that's my pleasure to participate. And uh, David, I think that, you know, this guy, George Lease, the professor from Kelso, Scotland, he thought that he could bring something to the table that would give us exponential growth. I think that, uh, we have exponential growth, and I don't think Janet Napolitano is going to be the last person that gets Google baited by Able Danger. David, over to you. Yeah, I actually feel I don't think the academic community or faculty has got anything to contribute. In fact, um, uh, they're a party to the greatest uh, intellectual frauds in history. And going back to my engineering uh, past, the idea that uh, 0 .0019 uh, percent of the Earth's atmosphere that is occupied by the anthropogenic uh, part of carbon dioxide can affect anything other than delay cooling a little bit is beyond absurd. But anyway, I digress. Um, so ground transportation service providers, I'm absolutely confident we will be able to prove that there was a signal systems uh, death squad out in Spain cross-checked incidentally field to see if SOS Children's Village is in Spain. Of course it is. It's in 133 countries. Just to remind you, the patron of SOS Children's Villages is a guy called David Johnston, who was Obama's overseer at Harvard University. He's now the Governor General of Canada, and he's a co-investor with the late General Alexander Haig, in the CAI private equity group, which ran the book or acts as the bookmaker on 911. So that's kind of cute. Um, now, another set of clients for Signal Systems, Jason McLean, are legal firms. Well, isn't that wackety do, if that's the right term? Because in February of 2001, KPMG Consulting had an IPO, an initial public offering, and spun itself off from the main body of parasitical incompetence called KPMG, 
aided and abetted by the Sidley Austin law firm, which sheltered the murderous psychopath Bernadine Dawn between the period of 1984 to 1988, when she was the mentor of various women interns at that law firm, which dates back to 1866. That was the law firm, if people collect, that handled the trust of Mary Lincoln and actually managed to put her in a lunatic asylum for a few years in order, presumably, to keep her silent about what really happened to her husband. But very interestingly, when Sidley Austin arranged the IPO of KPMG Consulting, a company tossed in $1 billion worth of kit. And that company was Cisco. So the kit would have been the routers and servers provided by Cisco to allow KPMG Consulting, aided and abetted by the Sidney Austin law firm, to mount a man-in-the-middle attack on the United States of America on 911. So what is the connection between Cisco and Signal Systems? Well, if you Google Signal Systems, you'll find it has strategic partnerships with Cisco. So it's two-way radio and portable repeater systems used in electronic warfare depend on Cisco routers and servers. And Cisco is the largest provider, having bankrupted and destroyed and then confiscated the patents of Nortel. So by far and away, it's the largest provider of servers and routers for the Internet. And a large chunk of its kit is produced in China, meaning that China thanks to Obama and uh, Clinton and the corrupt patent office in the United States run by Serco, has now got a backdoor into all of America's military chains of command and at will can trigger an event or events such as we saw on 911 and impute it to uh, innocent parties and drag proper crime scene investigations away and fill the gap with morticians and coroners to gather up the body bits, identify which body they belong to, bleach them of evidence, pop them in a plastic bag, hand them over to the loved ones of the people who've gone or passed and say, look what a good job the state has done. We've found almost all of the body bits of your loved one, and now you can bury him and get on with the rest of your lives. Unfortunately, in the case of United 93, where the Bombardier aircraft was in the vicinity, a 100-ton plane uh, disappeared into the ground, and there was not enough debris to fill half a dumpster. And the people who arrived at that crime scene, including the Demort folks, they gathered up what they could, but they couldn't find much in the way of human remains to send to the relatives. But they did come up with an amazing piece of evidence, which was a red bandana uh, that is conveniently associated in the film United 93, and I haven't bothered to watch it, but that's what I understand, with the hijackers strapping on a red uh, scarf or around their head, and then invading the cockpit. So what that evidence is to, is to enhance the credibility of the illusion or the script that was written for the crash of United 93. So let's carry on. Uh, I think I've got this. Yes. Uh, um, we've got uh, firms, then we have real estate offices. Well, there would have been quite a few real estate offices in downtown New York that would have handled the 99-year leverage lease from the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey to uh, Larry Silverstein, where the brokerage, the mortgage broker was GMAC, General Motors Acceptance Corporation, run by the CAI private equity group Frank McKenna. 
So when Signal Systems offers services to real estate offices, I suppose one of the services they could offer was, well, if you've got a, a lease where you don't expect to get paid back because the, the, the rent roll of the tenants is shrinking and it's a 99-year lease and you've got $3.4 billion of skin in the game, we, that is CAI Private Equity Group with Signal Systems, can help you recover your loan a lot faster than when you placed it in July of 2001, and we'll double your money. So with a nice catastrophe bond, they doubled their money, and a significant slice of cash would have gone to the people who did the spot fixing for 343 dead members of the fire department of New York, and no doubt, the officer's pension fund was sitting one side of the spread bet or the over bet and the, the rank and file and grunts were sitting the other side. They presumably would have been interested in bringing down the body and the officers, at least the ones who were on the inside, would have been interested in maximizing the body count and maximizing their personal wealth. Dirty stuff. So what else have we got? Let me just uh, hey, put David. that in. David, Go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, 221 or 1221. So, what do you think about going another nine minutes and taking the weekend off? Yeah, totally. I'm in favor of that. So, um, I just move on to environmental firms. So, the cleanup of the Deepwater Horizon. Uh, just a little reminder I used to be in the oil well blowout prevention business or the killing of the wells after. Um, uh, a fire took place. I did a couple in the Persian Gulf, one in Brunei and one in Iran. And I can tell you with considerable confidence that the Deepwater Horizon, which was not owned by BP, but BP has the deeper pockets, it was actually owned or 40% was owned by Transocean, which is a Schlumberger company that used to employ me. And the cement bond crew on that rig were told to get off the rig about nine hours before the rig blew without, recur without recording the cement bond and the insurance on the rig was doubled three weeks before it blew and it's a insurance fraud and then they've gone after a huge uh, fine for BP which had nothing to do with it and the money's gone into the United States Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund run by Field Sister since 1984 with Eric Holder. So screw them. Non-profit society, um, <laughs> ACORN was sent in after Hurricane Katrina to uh, clean up the evidence of the... Excuse me, Phil, could you take over? For... Yes, I, I understand that your urologist calling. This should be a short call. So what we have is David talking to his doctor, and uh, then we have Ginger putting up something spooky in the woods, always vigilant. Uh, and speaking of the woods, at this time last week, let's see, this time in Plum City is 2.23 p.m. on Friday. Uh, we were having a great time at 2.23 p.m. last Friday because right here on this casting couch was uh, Bengo, the great big tall guy with the Harley Davidson, and uh, Bucky, uh, his little brother who's 11 years younger, and also there was Agent Tillman, and uh, I was here, and Pastor Clydesdale was here. Notice I didn't say Clyde Holt, because when Able Danger gathers, he sometimes is willing to participate as Agent Clydesdale if it involves driving a Studebaker, uh, which I don't know if Jack Mack has given me permission to buy that 1940 Studebaker yet, but uh, I've talked to three other people that have given me permission. The company that would be willing to haul it from California door to door from where it's at to my house for probably less money than it would take me to drive the thing if it drove well and I'm confident it does. But uh, And then I talked to the insurance lady who insures old cars and uh, she indicated that normally that car would be worth $17,000 but because of the low mileage it's not low mileage to in my mind, but I guess for a 1942 car to have 60,000 miles, the insurance company says it's low mileage, and she could see from the pictures what type of condition it is in, which I don't think it's too far from flawless, and it's all original, 
it's a California car, so it's not there's not rust on it. And if Jack Mac gives me permission, perhaps by Monday I can report that we've got a fourth Studebaker in the fleet, uh, which means if we ever have a Plum City plunge in July, of, say of 2020 or July of 2045 uh, or July of 2525, if man is still alive, if woman can survive, they may fall in love. That was uh, by Zager and Evans, and they were from Omaha, off the top of my head. David, are you back yet? Uh, yes, Field. Uh, so uh, just uh, put up about uh, Acorn in Katrina. So your sister and uh, SCSI friends uh, quite obviously had deployed signal systems, portable repeaters, and two-way radios in the general area where Hurricane Katrina was expected to strike the coast. My understanding is Hurricane Katrina, actually the eye of the storm, passed or bypassed New Orleans 80 miles to the east about 21 hours before the levees gave way in four places simultaneously. Now there's no way that can occur without a synchronized detonation and ignition of diary yield explosives in the levees, of course, that would have left an enormous amount of evidence. And the challenge for the non-profit organization uh, ACORN, which is closely allied to Obama, of course, is to get in there with whatever pretext they could find. And this is the pretext. Um, and this is what community organizers do. They created the Acorn Katrina Survivors Association with more than 5,500 member families and chapters in 10 cities across the country. And they popped in there and they quickly began fostering communication among displaced residents, fighting for disaster assistance, preserving homes, developing a rebuilding plan and providing a national voice for Katrina survivors. So they acted as a, pro a proxy for corrupt government officials led by your sister and the senior executive service and of course what they did is they removed or ensured with the surveillance communication from signal systems that any evidence of the bombs the underwater explosives and the levers would be removed and anyone who got a little too excited and interested was probably got a couple of bullets in the back of the head uh, where the, uh, this would have been attributed to a suicide. So I think Signal Systems and Jason McLean is very conveniently now in our, our crosshairs. I don't think he would have ever been expected to, ident to have been identified and flushed out and exposed. His name is probably field, I think, going to be as notorious on the Internet as your sister, who started with four hits, I believe, in 1997. And now if you go... Christine Marcy and Field McConnell, I think there's over two million, not all with that particular pair. But let's see what we can do with Jason McLean and see if he comes out of the woodwork and threatens to sue. And I think uh, I will point him at you if he does. And of course, that should be very amusing. Over to you. Yeah, it'd be amusing. But keep in mind for anybody from DHS, and notice that in Chapter 22, DHS sent 343 agents to the Red Wing Airport to encircle the black limousine and the purple limousine not knowing that Pastor Clydesdale in what appeared to be a Morphmobile, and I didn't say anything that you thought I said, I said Morphmobile, because I was getting so tired riding last night, at some points I'd say he's driving a 40 Studebaker, and at some points I was thinking about the 42 Studebaker, which Jack Mack just gave me permission to buy, uh, claiming that I would need to build a bigger shop. Well, build it, and they will come. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's Field of Dreams, and... Uh, Speaking of dreams, that rhymes with lots of things like cream, which is the color of the uh, Imperial, and Scream, which is the name of the Boeing 787 Screamliner. Uh, you see there are some people in France that are a little jealous of Boeing. Uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to point out the connection between Berkshire Hathaway. Notice I didn't say Fat Boy or Warren Buffett, but Berkshire Hathaway and Bombardier benefited to the tunes of millions, if not billions, when the Sukhoi Superjet slammed into the sheer wall in Indonesia on May 9th of 2012. And uh, they're probably benefiting and chuckling at the fact that uh, the Superjet that landed at uh, Keflavik, 
Iceland the other day didn't have its wheels down, which is it's almost unfathomable with all of the uh, procedures and safety backups and redundant systems to get a gear up landing in 2013. You almost have to try to make a mistake. But David, it's about 2.30, so unless you have something you really feel strongly about, I think we should ask for the big red button, the 3, 2, 1, and the push it, push it real good. What do you think? Yeah, it's a go, Phil. Uh, let's uh, look forward to Monday. Okay. Uh, Arizona Sunset says, KP, is that true about Oliver Klozoff or a joke? Uh, Oliver Klozoff is an inside joke that I created a few years ago. I have my own Facebook for this person. I have him as a Soviet living in Siberia in an underground missile silo. He was born, uh oh, there's the big red button. I got my finger at the ready. I, all I need now is a three, two, one, push it. There's the three, two, two, somebody's stuttering. I need a solid three, two, one, push it. I can't, I can't do a stutter step. And re keep in mind, I said stutter step, not Studebaker. I've got my finger on the big red button as the world can see through this. By the way, if uh, National Transportation Safety Board's uh, chief attorney, and I said chief, not cheap. Of course, attorneys are cheap. Otherwise, they wouldn't have their hands in our pockets. Three, two, one. I'm waiting for the, there's the panic button, but I don't have a push it yet. I've got my finger at the ready. I need a command of 